everyone, welcome to the sunset. <laughs> uh, this is a Friday night. I'm starting a reading vlog for the weekend now. Um, I wanted to start sooner, but it has been a crazy busy day. Hence the sunset, which I was like, I need to film the beginning before I lose the light. And I honestly, this might be worse. So um, let me go ahead and close the window before I blind myself. Uh, and turn on some artificial lights, so uh, BRB. <laughs> How about let's um let's sit the other way so you can see the Christmas tree. How about that? Ow, 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 be nice. Oh, my, ow, cats. Hmm? What are you doing? Ow. Ow. Uh, hello and welcome to the actual start of this vlog. So much better, right? Why did I? Okay. Let's just forget what just happened. Forget the beginning <laughs> thought mess that that was. Yeah. So, reading vlog today. Excellent. Great. We're on it. Kaz! Kaz! Right, so today was crazy, crazy busy, uh, and the weekend will also be crazy, crazy busy. But uh, I'm vlogging anyway. <laughs> this morning, I filmed a bunch of videos because I hadn't filmed anything in way too long. I am currently waiting for one of those videos. Oh, it's finished uploading. I need to quickly uh, um, finish uploading this. No, Kaz! So that I can give my patients early access. Like, you know, five hours of early access. <laughs> But technically it's still early access, so they can watch it like right this second or with everybody else tomorrow. Cat, stop it. For real, starting now is the vlog. But anyway, I filmed a bunch of videos today. I still had work to do today, so I did my work as well. And then squeezed in editing a video so I could upload it for my patrons. Um, so that's barely just been accomplished. Squeezed in a little bit of listening to one of the books that I have on deck for this weekend. Um, I have not eaten anything except some chips all day. I'm not even hungry. Wow! Ow! Ow! Kaz is being a delight. Uh, she's been sleeping all day, so of course she's awake now. <laughs> okay, so this weekend I have to pack, package a bunch of gifts that are for people that don't live near me, so I have to send them out in time for Christmas. So I have to like package them up and like write Christmas cards to like put in there and get them all ready to go so that uh, Monday I can go to the post office. Kaz, don't eat that. Stop it. You just want my attention, don't you, huh? Gotta keep an eye on Kaz, who likes to climb the Christmas tree regularly. So that's been wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so tomorrow uh, is my dad's choir's Christmas concert. So I'm going to that. So that's, that's it. I mean, today's been crazy busy. And then gotta go to the concert tomorrow and gotta find time to wrap all those gifts. But otherwise, I have time to read and vlog and cook and do things like that. So let's quickly go over the books that I aim to be reading. So I'm part of Kaz this weekend. Hi child, please don't attack me. You good to go? You okie dokie kiddo? And chill? What are you plotting? follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that uh, she found the bag of powdered sugar that my brother and I used to make a bunch of Christmas cookies, which you will also see me eating probably because it's a convenient snack. No, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, she found the bag of powdered sugar, chewed it open, and then ran around my apartment with it open, leaving a trail of powdered sugar. Cass, stop it. So love that for me. Anyway, Cass, can you like, go back to sleep, please? This weekend, Mara and I are starting the mad ship. Uh, the Mad, yeah, The Mad Ship, which is the second book in the Live Ship Trader series by Robin Hobb. Super stoked for this. I've been looking forward to it ever since we finished uh, Ship of Magic in summer. Yes, my darling. So, this will not be finished this weekend, but I'm for sure starting it. Then, the second of the Blades and Bodice Rippers Book Club books, I read the first one already, uh, which mark. Um, you'll just have to tune in to see what I thought. Uh, when we have the live show on Bethany's channel. But we are doing a double feature. So the second book is A Marvelous Light, which is Loki, my fault, <laughs> or my idea at the very least, because it was quite similar uh, or reminded me, Mar uh, which mark reminded me of this and I had my eye on this. So A Marvelous Light. Then I started reading uh, A Storm of Swords 
um, hoping to get it finished by the end of the month because like I barely finished Clash of Kings before the live show. I was finishing it literally the day of the live show uh, last month. So I'm trying to start earlier so I'm not in that situation again. So again, I don't aim to finish this this weekend, but like I have my check marks. I've gotten through one check mark. Ideally, I get through at least one or two more. Just plug along so that in, at a nice leisurely pace, so I'm not like cramming it in the day of the live. <laughs> and then my current audiobook is The Burning God by RF Kuang, which again, if you follow me on Instagram, I was bitching about the narrator's uh, intonation when reading a particular sentence, which irritated me a lot. Cat! Uh-uh! Uh-uh! What the fuck, Kat? So that is what I aim to be reading. Um, tonight? Uh-uh! Uh-uh! What is wrong with you? Uh-uh! You were being so cozy and cute all day? What is this bullshit? Uh-uh. Child, why are you an agent of chaos? I actually need to eat some food. So uh, I'll eat something and uh, keep an eye on this one. And tonight, hey, uh-uh. Armed and dangerous. Um, so yeah, tonight I'm feeling quite pooped from all of the things that I got done today. So I don't, I'm trying to decide what would be chill to read tonight. Probably listen to some more of The Burning God while I'm cooking and um, then read a bit of A Marvelous Light. It seems light. Um, or maybe Storm of Swords because I've read it before. So like not that it's like a comfort read but like it's kind of a comfort read because like I'm it's familiar territory to a greater or lesser degree even though it's been a while. I don't know we'll figure it out and you'll find out with me. I also just started watching Dexter. <laughs> I've never seen Dexter before. Um, I finished binge watching, last time I vlogged, I was binging Lucifer and I finished that. And uh, then in between, I started and finished the entirety of You, the show. I loved it. And now I'm watching Dexter, which I've never seen before. And there's like seven seasons of Dexter. So I'm on episode three. <laughs> I might just binge some Dexter tonight because I am so beat. And you know, binging Dexter gives me the liberty to keep it. Hey, she's bad all the time. She's extra bad right now. I don't know what the deal is. So all of that to say, that's the situation. Hey, uh-uh. Let's, let's, let's make some food. Let's do that. Great. Okay, let's do it.
good morning. I slept very late today because I was up very late watching Dexter, <laughs> which is uh, what I ended up doing instead of reading. Very, very ill-advised, but here we are. Pretty much every vlog, I guess, I'm just confessing to you that I binge watch TV instead of reading. Great, but uh, yeah, so I finally got my cup of coffee. It is very late in the day already. It's okay. I did, I woke up at like a little after nine. It is now 10. Uh, I had to like wash dishes, feed Kaz, chat with people on my phone <laughs> for way too long. And this morning, I thought I dreamed it, that I heard someone dumping packages outside my door at like 7 a.m. And I was like, cause like Kaz ran for the door immediately. And I was like, no, it's probably my neighbor just like doing something. But no, when I checked my phone this morning, a bunch of the packages said they were delivered. And I was like, for real? I barely ordered this and it's here like, at the crack of dawn. Anyway, so a couple things I ordered and then a Christmas present from Mara. So I'll start with that because it's on top. She sent me a cat sweater because <laughs> we are both confirmed cat ladies. So I'm excited to wear this. And not just that, she also sent me some Robin Hobb pins. I don't know where they're from. There's no like label or shop name attached to it, but they're very beautiful. I love them. I love how they're made of wood. I think I might um, take the, the pokey thing off the back and replace it with a magnet. So I think these would be really cool magnets. That's a crafty project and I'm not a crafty person. And then I ordered, I thrifted some Christmas sweaters. Uh, they're not Christmas sweaters, but you know, some wintry, Sweaters. I ordered three. Uh, two of them arrived. Number one and number two. And then, you know, number three will <laughs> arrive shortly, I hope. I think they were all scheduled to arrive like middle of this coming week. So I was like, dang, I won't have them in time to wear in vlogs and videos. Uh, and then here we are. So as soon as I finish my coffee or before I finish my coffee, I'll change into one or all of them. <laughs> well, the rest of this, well, I do have um, my dad's concert tonight. So of these sweaters, feel free to disagree, but I feel like this one is the one that's like the fanciest or like, you know, it looks a little more dressy. Like I will still wear this around the house and probably to bed, <laughs> but it looks a little fancier than this one, I think. So I'll wear this one tonight when I go. So today, while I putz around and ideally read during the reading vlog, I'll wear this one. Um, they're all a wool blend, so. And if you have questions about that, because I am vegan, I don't buy anything made of wool that's new, but if it's recycled or thrifted, then I'll buy it because it's already been made and it is more um, sustainable to buy used or reused items than new ones in the first place, even if we're not talking about wool or animal byproducts, but this already exists. I'm not supporting an industry that does this anyway. So that's my philosophy on that. In case you were wondering, um, on that note, I have mentioned before that I'm starting my vegan food channel uh, in 2022. And since I do most of my like food type stuff in vlogs, I feel like this is a good place to mention. If there's any food that I that you've seen me make or that you have questions about um, that you would like videos on on that other channel, I mean, I have ideas for what videos I want to make, but if there's something in particular that you're like, you, you like showed this in a vlog and I really want like to see you do a recipe video for it or something like that. Um, let me know and I'll prioritize making videos about those things. So yeah, just let me know, throwing that out there in case there's, I'll take requests is what I'm saying. I'm hoping to have my first uh, vegan recipe or vegan food related video up in the first week of January. Hoping, <laughs> we'll see. I have plans for what to film, but you know, it's a matter of actually doing it. I just got some new camera mounts, um, stands, whatever, um, that are for like overhead, you know, looking looking down the food that I'm making. So I was trying to figure out how to use it last night and I was like, I nope, I have to read the directions. I don't know how <laughs> this is supposed to work. So we'll figure that out. But today, 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 what's left up today? Um, I think, well, Mara just sent me these might be a sign that I should dive into the mad shit. That actually sounds pretty good. My audiobook hole hasn't come in from the library, but that's fine. <laughs> I love reading how by itself. I do audio just because it's efficient in the month because I can listen to it while I wash dishes or while I'm doing laundry or while I'm feeding calves. But 
since I'm going to be sitting down to read anyway. May as well be that. And my current audiobook is The Burning God anyway, so I'd have to put aside The Burning God. I was listening to The Burning God this morning. Don't have much of a reading update for you on that. Other than that, it is happening and I'm about 20% of the way through. So yeah, I need, oh, I need to make breakfast. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna change into my cozy sweater, make breakfast, and then settle down to read. Where's the book? You won't know what I'm talking about unless I show you the book. The mag ship. Actually, what I'm wearing right now low-key matches my mug and the book. Maybe I shouldn't change.
Well, hello. Long time no chat. <laughs> the sun is beautifully setting right now. It is, I mean, the camera never does it justice, but it's really lovely. It also means I have barely any daylight left <laughs> to use for this. So let's do a quick chat before I have to head out because uh, I'm having dinner. Okay, quick, okay. Oh, yeah. Many updates, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm heading out early. The concert is at 7.30, but I'm heading out uh, now-ish because uh, I'm having dinner with my brother first. Um, we're gonna have Thai, and then we're going to the concert, and then I'll probably head back to my parents' house after, uh, because Billie Eilish is hosting SNL, so I'm probably gonna watch that with them. But anyway, the mad ship. I haven't made a ton of progress, because I started late and have been distracted, but I am almost 70 pages into it, so. Not, not super far. I already want Kyle to choke on a dick and die, and I suspect that because he is so deliciously insufferable that he is in it for the long haul and we will be dealing with him until the very end, which is just bad news. But it's excellently well written. I'm already sucked into it. It's been a minute since I read Live Ship, uh, or the Ship of Magic. So uh, some of it, like, I didn't immediately remember, and then I was like, oh, yeah, oh, that's, the, oh, yeah, and this person, and the, they were, yeah, and then this, yep, 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 yep. So it's all, like, flooding back to me. Um, so I'm hoping, because no more reading will get done today, because dinner, concert, SNL, but I'll probably listen to The Burning God in the car, and um, tomorrow I'll wake up late again, because I'll be up really late tonight, but uh, wrap gifts tomorrow for shipping and uh, do some more reading of maybe Storm of Swords and Marvelous Light since today was only this and not even much of this. This reading vlog is a failure. Uh, anyway, um, I must dash. I might film some clips of dinner and the concert or not. I don't know. I'll bring the camera with just in case. But, uh, no promises. See you later. <laughs> Tell me why the tree looks like this. Huh? Why? What is this? All the branches are down. What? What is this? How many times did you climb the tree? And why is this like this, huh? Can you put it back? Can you put it back like you found it? Brrr, yeah, do you too. Guess. You're the worst.
and happy Sunday. It is quite late again because I went to bed even later. The concert was really nice and then we went, hey, stop it. Excuse me while I deal with my demon child. Um, anyway, where was I? The concert was very nice. Um, and then after uh, we went back to my parents' house, my brother and I watched the newest episode of Wheel of Time. Except this time my parents watched it too. They hadn't seen any of it. And uh, they were like, you like it? We were like, no, we don't like it. We just like roasting it together. <laughs> and so my mom was like, you guys are gonna watch all of this? <laughs> and we were like, I don't know, maybe. Uh, she was like, ugh. And then my dad was like, well, at least I had fun roasting it. Um, and she was like, really? And he was like, you don't understand because you haven't read the books. But if you had read the books, you would know how ridiculous this is. <laughs> and my brother and I were just like, we done told ya. So then we watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> and then we watched Billie Eilish on SNL, which where I don't, I think it's like they delay it. They don't actually air it live here. So they did, it would be quite early, but they, they tape it and then we get it later. So it starts at 11.30 here. I don't know what time it actually starts in New York. Uh-uh, don't eat the tree. Don't look at me like that. So it ends at 1 a.m. Uh, and so then I had to drive back here. Hey, stop eating the tree. And uh, then I made some late night macaroni because I was hungry and watched Dexter. I went to bed at like 2 a.m. So yeah, it is now 10. Actually, it is later than, I got up at 10. And now I like, fixed the tree and made coffee. So I'm not wearing a watch. I don't have my phone. I think it's probably like 10 15 or 10 30. So, oh, it's still hot. Oh, actually just the mug is hot. Okay, that's fine. It's not fine. You don't want the mug to be hotter than your coffee. But. So isn't this the dumbest, the cutest mug? I just couldn't resist it when I saw it. I was like, that is so excessive. <laughs> um, so I had to have it and uh, here we are. I refuse to drink anything but gingerbread flavored coffee out of it because it looks like a gingerbread house. I think that's reasonable. Any hoosies. Yeah, so today I am also wearing Christmas jammies. Um, this is my first time wearing them this year. Cats, why are you the worst? Ow, come here. Come here. Come here. Hmm? Do you just want some lemon? You just want some brekkie? I fed her when I came home too, so she had late night snacks too. Also, I've been playing a new treats game with her <laughs> that uh, she's been, I think, loving. Okay, you take your avocado toast. Um, <laughs> so the first couple times I took her around and slowly put the treats in different places and like helped her see where they are. She'd be eating the first one and I'd be putting the second one down like, see, here's the next one. And uh, did that a few times so she kind of know where I put treats. And now I've just been putting them in all those places and not slowly. And she just like runs around rechecking all of the places and being like, did I miss it? Did I lose it? Where is it? So like I help her out sometimes be like, I think it's right here. <laughs> and she just makes the cutest little chirping sounds. She's always like, ah, ah. So I guess maybe she's not having fun. Maybe she's uh, traumatized by the treats game, but I think it's cute. So we'll play the treats game later. Okay, I don't know. Eat my pajamas. See, you can be cute and sweet. Why can't you be cute and sweet? Ow! That's very rude, baby. Don't, don't stand on the books. Okay. So today, um, I might read a bit more of Mad Ship, but I'm leaning because I am quite tired. I do need to read another chunk of Storm of Swords. Don't know if I'm gonna do that today. But I would like to start The Marvelous Light. That seems like a cozy, easy thing to read. That like, realistically, I might be able to read the whole thing today if I do not much of anything else. But I have to do much of anything else because <laughs> I have to wrap all of the presents and write all the cards. So that's uh, an after breakfast problem. <laughs> I say problem, I like doing it. It'll be nice, but I'm too tired right now. Anyway, so yeah, I should probably make breakfast for myself and for Kaz. And um, yeah, that's where we're at. Happy Sunday.
So, uh, it is time for tea, and I've been saving this for this vlog. Um, so, Bird and Blend, the tea company, which I'm a big fan of, they contacted me a while ago and were like, a, uh, thanks for sharing that you like Bird and Blend. Uh, a bunch of people bought tea because you shared, so we want to say thank you. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know a bunch of people would buy tea. Um, so they're like, yeah, if there's a, you know, a flavor you want to try, let us know, or, you know, we'll just surprise you. And, um, then, like... I was like, I mean, awesome, free tea. And then nothing came, and I was like, well, that's okay. <laughs> like, this is a freebie, whatever. And then they contacted me and were like, hey, so we got it back in the mail. Like, did we have your address wrong or whatever? And I was like, no, that's my address. Uh, so they sent it again. Except now, I now have two packages from Bird and Blend. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if they just sent me a second one of the same. Um, or or what, um, but we'll find out. So the flavor that I asked for, when they asked me to, if I wanted to pick one, um, was their cherry bakewell tart flavor, which sounds really good. So at least, at least one of these is that. And if it's both of them are that, then I really hope it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this is the first pouch they sent me that got sent back to them. Um, so this is the cherry bakewell tart. And let's give that a sniff. I'm gonna, I just boiled some water, so we'll try it. <laughs> Ooh, it looks pretty because it has cherries. Mmm. Oh, it smells amazing. And look how pretty it is. Look how pretty that tea is. Um, yeah, so what's in it is it's Chinese white tea, almond, cranberries, hibiscus, rosehip, apple, currants, black currant, red and blue corn flowers, and flavor. <laughs> it smells amazing. I'm excited. And then, yeah, I like let's find out if I have just extra of this. <laughs> It has like their logo in the pack. Oh, wow. They sent me a bunch of stuff. Okay, so it's more of the Cherry Bakewell. So I hope that's good. They also sent me other stuff. Okay, so Cherry Bakewell. Yum. Guys, this is not for you. Please do not be chewing my tea bags. And then some like individual sachets. This is Dozy Girl, which is Sleepy Time blend of chamomile, lavender, and rose. That sounds nice. Then Spiced Pumpkin Pie. It's Autumn Spiced Pumpkin Chai with black tea spices, cinnamon cloves, and ginger, carrot, vanilla pieces, and natural flavoring. So that's that one. And oh, I almost asked for this. I couldn't, they were like, you know, which one do you want? And I was like, mm, I'm gonna go with Cherry Bakewell. But the one that I almost picked was Banana Bread Chai. And um, that's, they sent me a sachet of it. So I'm so stoked to try this. It's rooibos spices, cinnamon, ginger, and cardamom, freeze-dried banana, vanilla pieces, and natural flavoring. So, yay. And uh, a little, a tea club, I guess, sticker. And some tips about brewing tea. And I guess a card. Brew crew. Thanks for helping to spread the tea, love. It means the world to us. Have a terrific day. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so nice. I, wow. <laughs> I was not expecting this when I just like shared on my Instagram that this is some yummy tea. So let's try it. tea has been brewed it looks very red and also i realized um after i turned the camera off that there's actually no cherries in it even though it's cherry bakewell tart cherry bakewell tart flavor it's cranberries um so anyway if you were allergic to cherries and wanted this tea you could have it mm, you can really smell the almond oh, and i love almond like almond extract marzipan i used to love bear claws back when i could eat them Mmm, you can taste, it tastes like, it tastes like cherry and almond even though there's no cherries in it. I guess cranberries are a pretty good dupe for cherry. Mmm, 
That's really good. You know what would go really well with it? Since it has almond. Some of the Christmas sugar cookies that me and my brother made last weekend. Was it last weekend? Yeah. We made gingerbread and sugar cookies, so I think that is the plan.
Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. <laughs> uh, it's coming up to time to wrap up this vlog and I realized that I haven't actually given any reading updates. Like, I mean, I, I gave a little bit of one for Madship last night, but anyway, let's talk about the books. <laughs> um, so I got to page, uh, around to page 100 in Marvelous Light and then stopped so that I could get to about page 100 in Mad Ship. And then with all of the listening I've been doing on and off, I'm about halfway through The Burning Cod. And tonight, after I wrap up, I'm gonna try, I'm not gonna be able to read my next, like, checkpoint chunk in A Storm of Swords, but I want to read some of this because it's stressing me out how much I have left. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk about the books. <laughs> so A Marvelous Light is if I don't know if I mean I talked about it in in my TBR video, but um so basically this was pitched. Well hello baby. You wanna tell the good people what you be reading? Something causing chaos. Ow. What are you doing child? Yeah? What are you doing, huh? <laughs> so yeah, A Marvelous Light was pitched um, as Don's Strange and Mr. Norrell meets Red, White, and Royal Blue. And I love Don's Strange and Mr. Norrell. I've never read Red, White, and Royal Blue, nor do I really feel any great inclination to, because contemporary romance is something that I rarely, if ever, feel called to pick up. So basically, it is a, an alternate version of historical England in which there is magic and it's a male-male romance, hence the those comparisons. And um, so far, I don't feel any kind of way about it. I feel, I mean, I feel such an intense amount of nothing that I guess I feel like it's not good. Like, I don't feel actively angry towards it. Like, I'm not sitting there fuming about it. I'm not sitting there going, this sucks, but I'm just sitting there going like, I care a negative amount about this. It is doing a few things that are, like actively annoy me, but not often. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves with like this sort of like fluffier historical fiction is how often the authors will make their dialogue or even the narr like narration and prose just in general will try to like make it sound old timey by just putting extra words in and often using them incorrectly. <laughs> And it's not like oh, egregious, like it's not, well, sometimes it's egregious, but it's just like not quite how you're supposed to use that word or not quite how you're supposed to use that expression and not quite how historical, how people in historical times would have expressed themselves. It's like, it's just a bit off and it feels very try hard. It feels like, oh, if I just put extra words in, that makes it old timey. And I'm like, no. No, it doesn't. So it's doing a little bit of that. I've seen far worse. I mean, I ranted at length about um, The Vanished Bride, I think it was called. It was like a Bronte sisters detective mystery. Like that was one of the worst examples of that. And last year I read Dangerous Liaison? Or Dangerous Liaisons? Is that a movie? Am I thinking of, is that, what's the name of the movie? <laughs> what is it called? Well, anyway, there is Dangerous Alliance. Dangerous Liaisons is the movie. Dangerous Alliance was the book I read, and that did that also egregiously. Um, and others have as well. Those just come to mind. So this isn't that bad, but it's doing a bit of that, where I'm just kind of like... Mm. And then the story itself, I just don't think it's very interesting. I don't think the characters are very interesting. Like, there's just like stuff happening, and there's like a magical thing. It's like you're learning about like magic stuff, and these two characters are obviously falling for each other. And I just, I don't feel any chemistry. I don't think they individually are very interesting as people. If we like forget about the romance and you're like, but are they interesting characters? They are not. The magic doesn't seem all that interesting to me. It all just seems like from the old timey speech to the magic, to the romance, to the settings, all of it feels very try hard. Um, but I'm only about a hundred pages in, so it could change. Unlikely, but it could change. Um, so we'll see. I guess you'll find out in the live show on Bethany's channel for Blades of Mops Rippers versus Mad Ship, which like I read a bit of yesterday and I, I mean, I was already loving it, but now having this direct contrast, like whenever I'm reading a bad book or a book that I don't think is good, or even if I don't think it's bad that I just like, I don't think it's great. I often find myself thinking like, do I like books? Do I like reading? What is it? Is it me? It's like, like, why am I not interested in this? Why am I so bored by this? 
why am I still like meh about this? Is it me? Do I like, do I just not connect words on paper anymore? Um, and then immediately I pick up Bad Ship and within a page my like heart is thumping and I'm like oh my god and I'm having like a visceral reaction to what's going on in this fictional book and like I, <laughs> I managed to leave off right before, like literally right before they're about to do something. Um, is it super spoilery to tell you? I don't think so because I won't name names. Um, they're pref I mean, these are all, you know, books that take place largely like on the water in ships. So there's somebody who needs to have a limb amputated. And so then we had the scene where their limb was amputated. And it's from the perspective of the person doing the amputating. And like, I've read about amputations before. I read a lot of fantasy and a lot of grim dark fantasy and I like war and all that. So like, it's, it's not my first rodeo in terms of reading about an amputation, but it was described so, wow. I was, I was like, oh my God. I, I literally like had my hand to my mouth and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> So anyway, and then like from moving on from amputation to like just like character situations and character drama. And once again, like there was like, as they were talking, I was like, oh yeah, that happened. And, oh yeah, that's who you are. It's like, it's coming back to me. Um, and it's just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, I kind of just want to keep reading this, but I have Storm of Swords to read. So um, that's what I'm going to read tonight after I'm done talking to y'all. And lastly, The Burning God. I feel about this so far pretty much exactly the way that I felt about The Dragon Republic. Nothing about it is, is bad. I just, I don't feel very connected to it because it's just the characters, as I said in my wrap up, I'm talking about The Dragon Republic, the characters are all kind of a little bit one note. They aren't that complex or interesting or deep as characters. Like they're not bad. They're not caricatures. Again, it's not bad. It's just not that good in terms of the characterization. So, and and it's all just, it's kind of very bleak. And so in the same way that the characters are pretty one note, the story is pretty one note. So it's not like, I mean, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare and I'm a big fan of Joe Abercrombie and I'm a big fan of people who blend tones and who take you through the highest highs and the lowest lows. And the juxtaposition of those things usually makes them even, it heightens the experience of each. So like having some comedy in the middle of your drama um, is that much funnier. Um, and having some drama in the middle of your comedy is that much darker and unexpected. I think Hobb does a great job blending some levity with darkness, darkness with levity. Um, again, Joe Abercrombie, Shakespeare, that's what I like. And these books, it's just, it's all just kind of bleak. There isn't, like, there is, I mean, and, and just life isn't that way, you know what I mean? Like, uh, even, even at the worst of times, like, like in an Abercrombie book, like, people, as human beings, seek out opportunities to escape whatever darkness is facing them, either through humor with each other or distraction. So usually, like, books will also reflect that. Even in the darkest of times, like they're gonna, like in Shakespeare, there are moments of levity even in the, his tra most tragic tragedies, because that's just how life is. It's never that one note. So that's I think why I just don't feel that much about this. Like I do think, like from a world building perspective and from a, how how she's re you know taking inspiration from history in order to write the series and the kind of concepts being explored. Um, I think it's good. But I think it's it's missing those the added flavors that could really make it a masterpiece, if that makes sense. So, yeah, which is disappointing because I would love to love this, and it just it's it's missing that that je ne sais quoi uh, for me too. Totally love it. I'm just I'm re I'm going through it and being like, this is good. It's good. I just, I don't, I don't feel anything about it for that reason. Or at least I think it's for that reason. So anyway, I will obviously continue and finish this trilogy, which I was on one of my goals for 2021. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that all about do it, I think. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about 
whatever I've shown you or talked about in this vlog. Let me know again um, if uh, there are foods that you want me to prioritize making videos about on my other channel. Um, and yeah, let me know. Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you.